Hey there, in this video we are going to look at a simple formula that you can use with the standard form of a quadratic function to get its vertex and then write the equation in vertex form quickly and easily. Let's do that right now. So to look at an alternate way of finding the vertex of a quadratic function that you have in standard form other than completing the square and uh, putting it into vertex form that way is uh, to develop a little formula that comes from the quadratic formula that gives the x-coordinate of the vertex. So we're going to start by uh, looking for the x-intercepts of this and then from that we'll see how we can uh, use a little shortcut to find the vertex. So if we were going to find the x-intercepts of that thing we'd have to put 0 for y and then take everything else here and then we'd have a is 1, b is negative 2, c is negative 8. Uh, we're not going to write too many steps down for the quadratic formula here. Let's remember that the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So if we wrote it out here, uh, x would be negative, negative 2 is 2, plus or minus square root of b squared b is negative 2, so that squared is 4. And minus 4 times a times c. Minus 4 times a is 4. 4 times 1 times negative 8 is negative 32. It's minus negative 32, so it's actually plus 32. And this is 2 times a is 1, so it's a 2. So skipped a few steps there, but what we'll end up with here is 2 plus or minus square root of 36 so 6 over 2. Now if we think about what we have there. Now normally you would uh, you'd work this out by evaluating the top and then dividing by 2. So if I do that I get 2 plus 6 is 8 divided by 2 is 4 or I have 2 minus 6 divided by 2 which is negative 4 over 2 which is negative 2. Those are my two x-intercepts. Negative 2 positive 4. Now if you know anything about parabolas you know that they're symmetric and if you know those two points you know actually where the vertex is it has to be halfway in between them. Not on the axis but somewhere on this line. This is the axis of symmetry. That, that value right there, the vertex has to be somewhere on that line because it has to be symmetric. The shape of the thing has to be symmetric. Now really if I looked at this a different way here if I, instead of working out the top and then dividing it, if I divided each thing separately here, that gives me 1, and then this gives me plus or minus 3. Now, if you look at the graph, what that is, 1 is this value right here. That's that value. And then plus 3 or minus 3 is how far away from that 1. The way the quadratic formula works is the first part of it gives you where the vertex is. The second part of it gives you how far plus or minus it is. If I rewrote that quadratic formula instead of having the entire thing divided by 2a and instead had each term separately divided by 2a, that's exactly what that would be. The first part is where the vertex is, the second part is the, the up or down from that vertex to find those x-intercepts. So if I write that out down here now, x is negative b over 2a, just that first part, that actually is going to give me the x-coordinate of the vertex. So that little formula, if you want, that's a quick way to find that, find that x-coordinate of the vertex. x is negative b over 2a. Right? Just comes from the quadratic formula. It's just the first part of the quadratic formula. But once you know that, it's really quick to find the vertex. Let's try that right now. If you're going to try and find the vertex of this, again, you could do the long way of uh, completing the square, putting it into vertex form, or if you happen to know that the vertex is negative b over 2a, you could just substitute the values in, you'll have the vertex, the x-coordinate, pretty quickly. Negative 8 over 2 times 2, which is just negative 8 over 4, negative 2. The x-coordinate of this vertex is negative 2. If you want the y-coordinate of the vertex, well, once you know x-coordinate, you can just put that back in, substitute it for x, and you'll have the y-coordinate. So I'm going to do that right next to it here, substitute it in. 
So if I'm going to work this out, y is 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 minus 7. If I work that out, I have 4 times 2 is 8. I have minus 16, I have minus 7. That is going to give me negative 8 minus 7, which is going to give me negative 15. That is the y coordinate of the vertex. That is the x coordinate of the vertex. You can actually even write it in vertex form then, the equation, because you know that vertex form is x minus h squared plus k. So instead of this h here, you know that this is going to be minus minus 2. So this is plus 2, right? Because it's 2 to the left. And instead of that k, it's going to be minus 15. And then actually instead of the a, the a is the same in standard form or vertex form. So that 2 is going to be there. So a different way to find the coordinates of the vertex and even put it into vertex form. Let's try that last one here. So if we're going to try and do this, then again, use our little formula here, minus b over 2a. So we have minus 12 over 2 times minus 4. That's going to give us 12 divided by 8, negative 12 divided by negative 8. So it's going to be 12 over 8 or 3 over 2, that is, or 1.5. Whether you like working with fractions or decimals, doesn't matter to me, whatever you're more comfortable with, but that is the coordinate the x-coordinate of the vertex, and then if you want the y-coordinate, just substitute it in. And then if we work each of those out, or go to the calculator and put the whole thing in, so we've got 4 there, right? So that's the y-coordinate of our vertex, all right? And then, of course, if we want to put it into vertex form, we can do that because we can put our same A value there from up there. And we can say that this is minus 1.5 here. And we can say that this is plus 4, all right? So the vertex is 1.54, or vertex form of the function is that. All right, so that is a different way of finding the vertex of a standard form equation using that little formula that comes from the quadratic formula. It tells you the x-coordinate of the vertex. You can sub it back into the original function to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, and then you can even write the function because that a value is the same. All right, that's it.